processed food. What exactly is that? Um, milk, yogurt, bread? No, it's chips, pizza, cookies, soda. You know, junk food. Ultra processed food. So what is it exactly? Hi. For the folks who want to avoid getting food addicted, I often tell them, just quit processed food and you will probably be fine. It's the most obvious first step. But then people ask, well, what exactly is processed food or ultra processed food? How do I know if I'm eating it or not? Today, I want to dive into the NOVA classification system of food processing. This is the guide that we use in the field of food addiction. I will explain the categories and the differences between each category and why these differences matter in terms of our food sobriety. Let's get started. The Brazilian NOVA classification system is a framework that categorizes food into four groups based on the extent of industrial food processing applied to them. This is important to us food addicts because in a nutshell, the extent to which food is industrially processed often corresponds to how addictive or problematic that food can become. Basically, higher levels of processing enhance palatability through additives and refinement and therefore make overconsumption and addictive eating more likely. So first, unprocessed and minimally processed foods. This category includes foods that are in their natural state or have undergone minimal processing, such as cleaning, cutting, or pasteurization. Examples are fresh fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, eggs, milk, unprocessed meats like chicken and fish. There is plenty of research that shows that a diet rich in minimally processed foods, like the ones I've mentioned, are associated with a lower risk of cardiovascular disease, cancer, and premature death. And it goes without saying, this is the ideal level of food processing that matches food sobriety, food serenity. In other words, unprocessed or minimally processed. Nothing has been added to give extra pleasure, read extra dopamine and therefore an extra addictive potential. All the pleasure is within the realm of what the body and the brain can manage. That's the first category. Category two, processed culinary ingredients. These are ingredients derived from unprocessed foods and are used in cooking and food preparation. Examples, salt, sugar, honey, vegetable oils, butter, vinegar. These ingredients are usually not eaten in isolation, so are not addictive in and by themselves, unless, here's the caveat, a person is in late stage food addiction for the general population. As long as they're not eaten in isolation, they're safe. However, higher intakes of any of these can cause physical and mental health problems. If you think of it, sugar typically comes from corn or beets and honey comes from bees, and maple syrup comes from trees. If you ate those directly from the source, you would not get enough to cause bodily harm. How much honey can you eat when there are bees swarming around you? How much maple syrup can you eat when it's still in the tree? How much sugar cane can you eat when you're chewing on the sugar cane? It's not likely enough to cause bodily harm. However, the extraction of these ingredients, now that's the, the second level of processing, the extracting from their natural source makes it problematic. This is a further degree of processing that has occurred that invites an overload of too much of a good thing. By the way, did you know that sugar was once considered a luxury item? In the 16th century, it was so expensive that only the wealthy could afford it. It was not as abundant as it is today, where it's actually cheaper to eat sugary foods than non-sugary foods. Sugar today has become a public health disaster simply because it's hiding in almost every processed food that we consume third level of processed foods. These are basically category one, minimally processed foods that have had category two, sugar, salt, fat added to it 
foods that have been modified from their original form for convenience and palatability. Examples are canned fruits and vegetables, especially if there's syrup in them, cheese, artisan bread, cured meats like ham or bacon, pickles, plain unsweetened yogurt, flavored nut mixes with added salt and sugar oils, homemade pizza. These foods can be made in the home or contain ingredients that can be found in your cupboard. They are less likely to be addictive for the general population unless you add too much of the category two, sugar, salt, and fat. The addition of these ingredients makes food more highly palatable and thus more highly rewarding. If they can be eaten in moderation, are still considered generally safe for somebody who is not in the throes of food addiction. The excess palatability and reward potential and the possible disruption of the hunger satiety signals could derail the food addict. But for somebody who's not a food addict, they might be okay. Moderation is the key word here, the emphasis being on the less of these rather than more. It is recommended that the general population eat from category one to three in moderation. And if you can't, you're a food addict, you stay at category one. Last category, ultra processed foods. This is the category of foods that are industrialized formulations made by combining salt, sugar, oils, and fats with the extra substances like hydrolyzed protein, high fructose corn syrup, flavor enhancers, coloring, and other additives that undergo physical and chemical processes. End result, the food may not even be food anymore, but a food product. These are ingredients that will not be found in your cupboard. This is the category that poses the greatest challenge for our patients with food addiction because the sole intent of the ultra processed food industry is to make foods, yes, preservable, but mainly highly palatable. Examples, soft drinks, packaged snacks, candies, mass produced breads, not artisan bread where you're making the dough yourself and then putting in uh, some salt and pepper and leavening products. These are mass produced breads, breakfast cereals, energy bars, instant soups, frozen meals, Pizza might actually fit into category three. Frozen pizza is category four. It goes without saying that high consumption of ultra processed foods has been associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease, coronary heart disease, and cerebral vascular disease or strokes. Why are these particular foods addictive to us? I don't mean just to food addicts, but to the general population. Don't forget, ultra processed foods are designed to be highly palatable. We have food engineers hired to make foods highly palatable. In other words, read addiction. Ultra processed foods have the following qualities that contribute to their addictive potential. One, high sugar, salt, or high oil content. Put all of three of those together. Many ultra processed foods are loaded with these ingredients, which then trigger the release of dopamine in the brain reward circuitry, similar to drugs of abuse. Where foods might have been pleasurable in categories one to three, now they've been heightened to a level beyond pleasurable, but actually to euphoria. Second quality of ultra processed foods that makes it more addictive, rapid absorption. Ultra processed foods are high in refined carbohydrates, which are quickly absorbed by the body, leading to rapid spikes in blood sugar and insulin levels. This can then trigger intense cravings and overeating. One of the things we know in the addiction world is what makes a substance addictive is an abundance of the substance which will give an abundance of dopamine and how quickly it goes to the brain. An unrefined product like an apple or a Brussels sprout takes a while for the body to digest. Refined carbohydrates take not very long at all before they become glucose and then trigger dopamine. The third feature of ultra processed food that makes it addictive is its lack of satiety. 
Ultra processed foods are often low in fiber and protein and water content, which means that they don't promote feelings of fullness or satiety, which fiber, protein, water, and fat do. This leads to overconsumption and excessive calorie intake. Finally, intense flavor profiles. Ultra processed foods can intensify the taste of foods to make them highly appealing so that they might put flavoring of an apple into an apple crisp to make it more apple-y than an actual apple tastes. Combining sweet, salty, fatty, all in some mixture that is sometimes called the bliss point, this is an engineered drug high, makes it difficult to resist. You can see how ultra-processed foods, they're made to be addictive, even for a non-food addict. Going back to my first comment, how to avoid food addiction, or if you have food addiction, how to not make it worse, get rid of category four ultra-processed foods. For those of us who have already been damaged by our history of eating ultra-processed foods, let's talk treatment. Number one, you wanna understand the addictive potential of ultra-processed foods that I have just laid out for you and avoid them. Get rid of category four. Number two, focus on eating as much unprocessed and minimally processed foods as possible. Three, identifying trigger foods, even those that might be in categories one to three. If you're a food addict, you may find that even otherwise healthy foods can be a trigger for you. Classic example is cheese, nuts, peanut butter. These are all potentially fine. They might not be for you. Don't forget, with, with later stage food addiction, we also have other phenomena like volume addiction. Please check out my video on that. Number four, develop healthy coping mechanisms for dealing with cravings and emotional triggers as you're trying to quit, such as mindfulness practices, exercise, and social support. You're going to need all of those things so that you can stop eating foods if you've already become addicted to them. Then, once you've managed to become sober from those drug foods, then you want, number five, to find ways to maintain sobriety and avoid relapse. Food addiction often occurs with other mental health conditions like depression and anxiety. People use food to deal with those conditions. So if you want to stay food sober, you have to now address those underlying emotional issues through therapy and support in order to maintain long-term sobriety. In conclusion, the NOVA classification system is a valuable tool for understanding the role of processed foods, the level at which they can become a problem and then taking the appropriate steps towards finding and using the practical strategies for navigating the food environment. Thank you.